I have recently received the succulents as a gift from someone very special. I've actually done an unboxing video. If you want to see that video, please check below this video in the description box. So this one here has got some roots but are very, very dry. And I also have some cuttings that doesn't have any roots. So this one is a Compton Carousel. Beautiful, beautiful plant. But... It's got a couple of very dry roots on the end there but basically this doesn't have any roots for most of them since they're only cuttings and were only taken a few days ago so this one is a pvn or pearl von nonberg silk variegated so very special very rare plant anyway i'm just going to show you how i'm gonna preparation before potting up hello there my name is liz a self-confessed succulent addict, welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. I received this plant a couple of days ago through the mail. This Gilva Crest was all attached, all or one plant. So this one came from the bottom section here. And what I did, I separated it last night, so that's giving them time to heal up and callus off. So this one here came from that part there, so you can see they were attached like that. So I just pulled it off and let it dry up, so that's already showing signs of dryness. That's already dried up overnight. And this one as well, since I've just broken it off from the bottom here, that's already dried up as well. So that's already calloused off. And I've already cleaned it up. So all those dry leaves came from this one. And I thought I best, I almost got carried away in cleaning up that I decided I better stop and continue now to show you how to clean this off. And it's best to take off any dry leaves like so. Even in between there, if there's any dry leaves, take it off because that just promotes insect uh, hidey hole or hiding place for the insect. So you're best taking it off. I could still continue to pull off later on. But so now that's all nice and clean, even the small ones here. That's all ready to be planted. And this one is an Etna. The Etna has got some dry leaves here as well. But I'm not going to remove that. I'm going to actually just leave that because what happens is if I remove that that's just opening the bacteria or anything viruses now <laughs> to go into any any bad stuff to go into the plant here so it will get infected so you best I'm best just leaving it dried up and then anyway so this one is diamond state and this is very dry you can see that's really 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 dry so what do we do with all this dry rooted plant we're going to give it some seaweed treatment. So first of all, forget about the brand name. So this is Garden Basics. It's a brand name. So any seaweed, liquid, this is a hose on pack, but it doesn't matter. So any seaweed solution. So what you have to look out for is what's written. So this one promotes... Root growth reduces transplant shock, increases tolerance to plant stress, revitalizes soil. So we haven't got the soil. We're not using this for the soil. We're mainly using this ones, the seaweed. Okay, the seaweed, the seaweed <laughs> to revitalize the roots of our succulent and. Also, this one, so this is another brand. So again, sea salt. A lot of people get confused between sea salt and my other unmentioned whatever. It's the same thing. So this is the sea salt, the seaweed solution. Why am I covering that? But anyway, so this is already pre-mixed, ready to spray. So this is for hose on as well. I don't use the ordinary one. I use the hose on one for, for general. I use it for the garden and I also use it for 
this method or this treatment. So this is again the same thing. Enhances root growth and is ideal for planting. Stimulates flowering and fruiting. Uh, helps plants deal with pests, heat and frost. So it's basically the same stuff but we're more concerned about for the root health of our succulents. And if you can't get these two brands, this is in here in Australia, anywhere in the world, any seaweed. So please, any seaweed. So please don't leave a comment and say, I can't find it in my country. I don't know what sort of seaweed solution you have available in your country. As long as it's a seaweed or compost base, that's good enough. So what I like to do is roughly get about a capful. And I'm not going to put it here because it's going to make it drip and messy. So there we go. This is about a cap full. This is just plain water. Tap water, that is. And I'm just doing 500 ml. That's good enough. And I am going to put some in this clear container here. And also some into the small containers. There you go. It's almost made to measure. Anyway, that one. Is, there you go. And perfect. So the ones with, or this is a rubidona, not beautiful plant. So this one is got a fairly big root system. So if it's going to fit in here, I'll put it here. No, it's not. So I'll just put this one here. Okay, that can sit on the edge there. And Diamond State is also dry. So this one, I'm just going to shake it and put it in one of these pots here. Now, my Etna has got a big root system as well. So we just dunk it. Shake, shake, shake. Okay, <laughs> we just stay there. Now, this is... Ionium medusa. Medusa here. Now it's got dry leaves as well. Medusa, it doesn't matter. We can just dunk it in there. It's got small roots. I call this one whirlwind. This did not come with a name. And this one as well. So it's got little fluff. And it's dry, so I'm just going to soak it into here as well. That can sit there. Echeveria lapin. Beautiful plants. Gorgeous. Look at that. This one as well will sit here. So this one did not come with a name, but I'm just going to give her a name, Conch Girl, for now. And this one as well, dry, so we're going to soak it into here. The big, crested, beautiful Gilva will just give you a drink. You can just have a little sip. Already there, and that one, we'll just do the same, we'll just... <laughs> dunk it in here we'll put it next to that one there this one's quite big again it's very dry so i'm just gonna leave that there and leave that there and also this one tiny little bit i'm just gonna drop it there i'm gonna leave this one for a few minutes half an hour or so and or even an hour, it's best leaving it for at least an hour. But because we're doing this video, I'm going to cut it short. So this one is a leaf-grown Monocerotis variegated. Uh, she, This one is already dry as well. So again, just going to dunk that there. <laughs> and this one is a baby. It's got the roots and it's, she's grown it in coconut coir. And this is lemon and lime silk variegated. And again, dunk. Whoopsie. You go there and what else? Oh, this one is Best Baits or Echeveria Best Baits. One of my favorites. And you can see some new growth, but doesn't matter. I will still give it a drink over there. There you go. So now we're ready to pot up. Oh, I forgot about this ones as well. This one has got some roots. This is Lenopetalum. She's given me three of them and might as well drop it in there. 
the rest of these ones here, which is, what are you, Tinkerbell Variegated Cubic Frost PV and Silk and Monroe Variegated. I'm going to leave them as is and I'm just going to pot them up and I will just show you how I put them up. So first of all, I've got some pots here. I've already chosen my pots. Now this one I've got first off, okay, Compton Carousel. I have a big bowl and this is probably about three inches deep. Cover it with coconut coir on the surface. Why put some coconut coir and you're gonna cover it? The variegated Monroe has got very, very, very tiny, almost gone roots. <laughs> so this one now, I wriggle it around. Some of the granite goes inside. Perfect for creating an environment for the Compton carousel to breathe. Now one Compton carousel potted up, yay. Excellent.